In 2016, I started taking poker seriously. I was really bad at it and I started at Micros. So by the end of that year, I had made a solid $2,019.53 over almost a million hands. But I kept on going. I knew that this was what I wanted and there was no going back. Three years later, in 2019, I was already a big winner at 500 Zoom, a content producer for One at Once, had 12 clients in my private training program, and other 14 clients in my staking company. And in that year, only three years after I started, I made over $120,000 with poker. In this video, I'm literally going to tell you everything you need to know to make $100,000 a year with poker step by step. Let's go. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Saulo Costa and here I make poker strategies simple so that you can make more money. There are three main things you need to do to achieve $100,000 a year playing poker. These are first, get good. Second, play consistently. And three, build other sources of income. Yes, of course, this is really obvious, but I will break down each of these points into three critical points to help you achieve these goals. The first critical point into getting really good is learn theory. Now, if you have watched my videos here on other sites like Run It Once or ETO Wizard, you have probably heard me saying that you need to learn theory. And I'm never gonna get tired of saying this because it is one of the most important things for a professional career. There is no very strong player that doesn't have a very good intuition and understanding of theory. Is it impossible to make it in poker or to be really good without theory? If you think of being really good in poker just with results, I think that is in fact possible. But I would argue that those are going to be exceptions. There are not going to be many people that can make hundreds of thousands of dollars in poker and they don't understand a single thing about theory. These people, even if they have a more exploitative approach, they're going to have very solid theoretical fundamentals. So in my opinion, if your goal is to get good in poker, one of the best things or one of the most important things you have to do, and I would say one of the first things you have to do is to learn theory and to get good at theory. Nowadays, you have plenty of options to get good and learn theory. You have plenty of training platforms out there such as GTO wizard which in my opinion is the best training platform in the world for gto strategies and you have other types of resources on the internet but if i were you and i wanted to get really good at theory i would double down on that and i would spend money on it i would either buy coaching for someone or enter a staking agreement or a coaching for profits agreement or i would buy some course on the internet from someone respectable i would really invest into getting really good technically and understanding theory because as soon as you do that all the rest is going to get easier you also have to spend a lot of time studying, playing with solver, playing with toy games, pen and paper if you want to. I think that's that's really good and viable. So anything you want to do, anything that is available to you, I think you should invest your time and effort into it as long as it's going to help you get really good and learn theory. Now, the second critical point about getting good is learn to exploit. Every single great player in the world knows and is willing to exploit their opponents. There is no great player in the world that is simply forgetting or ignoring the fact that almost everyone in every game is exploitable. They're not playing very close to GTO, not playing very close to theory. Therefore, there are playing strategies that can be exploited for more money than the solver can extract. So if you take a look at Linus Love, take a look at Stefan, just to name a few guys that play cash games. If you think about the biggest names in tournaments as well all of these guys they're going to be playing at least a portion of the time with exploitative strategies and I think this is really important because even though you can get really good just by applying theory the real money is actually in exploiting your opponents imbalances whether they are recreational players or other professionals people are going to leak and if you want to really get good to the point of making $100,000 a year with poker, you really want to learn how to exploit other people. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you need to learn what are the population tendencies. You need to study your pool that you play in so that you can see whether they are playing really close to theory or not. Spoiler alert, they're not. But what you have to do is you have to gather a lot of data on your opponents on the pool that you're playing in. And ideally, you want to compare those stats with GTO stats. And then you're going to see what's the gap between what population is doing and what solver would do and then you want to exploit that gap you want to make strategies or build strategies that are going to extract ev from the very existence of those gaps and that's what you should do now this is not easy task i'm gonna give you that but you need to start somewhere start looking at the internet you're going to quickly see 
the name MDA coming up, which stands for Mass Database Analysis, you're going to run these types of things and you're gonna have to start developing some sort of study into population tendencies. And this is actually not the only thing you're gonna have to do because not only you're gonna have to know what is the gap between population and solver, you're also gonna have to understand how to exploit that gap. It's not always obvious how to exploit that gap. Many people get confused. Sometimes they think, oh, my opponent is doing this, so I'm going to do that to exploit them. And they might be wrong. They're in initial intuition might not be correct. So you're going to have to play with models. You're going to have to play with the assumption on solver and see what exactly the solver does to exploit that gap. So it's a two-step process. Gather the data, see what the gap is between your real people performance and solver performance, and then understand exactly how you should be exploiting that gap, how you develop counter strategies that actually make money off of those imbalances. And third and final point about getting good is embrace risk. Now, this is one of the most crucial things about getting good. Now, when I talk about embracing risk, I'm not really talking about executing strategies. I'm talking about the mental attitude you have towards the game. In most situations, you can choose to simply execute something you have learned, or you can have a mental attitude to embrace the potential risks of each play. You can ask yourself, what is the riskier play that I could make here? And in a lot of situations, the answer to that question is actually the best play because the riskier play is the one that is going to put your opponents into the toughest spots. So if you can develop that mental attitude, I really think that this can differentiate you from the other regs and it can allow you to achieve higher ring rates than the people that are playing your limits. Okay, so this was the getting good part. Now we can move on to the play consistently part. This part is really hard for most people. Poker is a game that when you lose, you don't want to keep playing or you play worse. So playing good and playing consistently is really, really hard. And we need to come up with a plan to maximize our chances to be very consistent, not with the volume that we're putting in, but also with the quality of the volume you're putting in. Can you make $100,000 a year without being consistent with your volume? I think you can. It is possible but it is not probable. It's not very likely that you're going to be able to make $100,000 a year with poker if you're not consistent with your volume. So this is extremely important in my opinion. Now let's break down what playing consistently means in three critical steps. The first step I separated for you guys in this video is set goals and build an accountability group. Now this is one of the best advices I can give you in this video. So I hope that after you finish, you at least take this with you. Now, this may sound like a small cliche, right? Just, you know, set goals and have people around you that have similar goals, all that kind of stuff. But remember that things are a cliche for a reason. And I think that first of all, setting goals and then having people with whom you share those goals and you build systems with those people, that's going to be extremely powerful to sustain your performance and your consistency. So what I'm talking about is really simple. In terms of volume, set goals for how many hands you wanna play each month. Set goals for how many tournaments you wanna to play each month. Once you set those goals, you're gonna to want to share those goals with someone else, someone whom you trust, someone who maybe shares the same values as you and the same goals as you, at least similar goals. And then you're going to set commitments with those people. Let me give an example that is going to be really clear. Have you ever experienced waking up in the morning and knowing you should go to the gym, but not really feeling like it. You're just feeling like staying in bed for another hour, and maybe just get a little bit more sleep or just staying lazy in bed. Everyone has experienced that at least once in their life. But what if you had set up a commitment and appointment it's scheduled with a personal trainer, for example? You made a commitment with them that you would be at the gym at 9 a.m. at that day. Now, this is really gonna make you much, much more likely to just get out of bed and go there, find your personal trainer and be at the gym at the right time. And the reason for this is that we are social people. We don't want to let other people down. So if you make a commitment with someone else, we really don't want to let those people down. We don't want to disappoint them. So by making commitments with other people, building an accountability group, you're gonna be much more likely to follow through with your promises and achieving your goals. I think here, what you want to strive for is a small group, but a small group of people that you really trust and really have similar goals to you. And I cannot overstate how powerful this can be. And if there's one thing you can take out of this video is build that group for yourself. Find someone with whom you can study consistently with and that you can share your goals with, and then you make commitments to that person. I'm going to be in that place at that time to do this thing and then you two are going to grow or you two you three or four doesn't matter you're going to grow really really fast together by building the system and by building this accountability group second critical point about playing consistently is 
build a damn schedule this is actually something i wish was taught in schools because building a schedule can really really make your life easier and i would say that if you're not currently building a schedule if you're not currently planning your days your weeks your months you're leaving tons and tons of money of your career at the table because if you do that if you can develop the habit of planning your weeks, planning your days beforehand, you're gonna see that you're gonna be much more likely to achieve the things that you need to achieve or to execute the tasks that you need to execute in order to achieve your long-term goals. And this is one of the things that I wish you take out of this video, build a damn schedule. So one thing that I do is every Sunday night, I'm gonna take maybe 20, 30 minutes to plan my entire week. I already know what's gonna happen that week. I already know what kind of commitments that I have, appointments and meetings and all that stuff. I'm going to schedule everything hour by hour every single day of my week is going to be scheduled and then you might be like oh so this is so boring this is so hard do I have to do this every week for every single day and then every hour of my day is going to be like parameterized and whatnot like you have to do this if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year you're gonna have to do hard things and this is actually not the hardest thing in the world it's actually something easy it just requires some time to build the habit of doing so so make the habit of separating some time in your week to plan your entire week if possible plan your entire month hour by hour you're going to prioritize whatever you need to do the most in that week you're going to select a few times lost to execute those tasks and then the other times you're going to be prioritizing the other things in our priority list but make sure you build the habit of scheduling your days scheduling every single hour of your day and that you're going to see that you're going to be much more likely to execute the tasks that you need to do and this will bring you closer to your long-term goals third and final critical point about performing consistently and playing consistently is take extreme care of your mental health this is something really really important that also cannot be overstated if you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year with poker you're gonna have to be able to play consistently to put volume consistently and not fall into the habit of playing less or playing worse when you're running bad or when you have external problems like personal problems external factors making a difference in your career so you want to take extreme good care of your mental health you're not gonna be able to perform consistently if you're upset all the time if you are sad all the time if you're anxious all the time if you're tired every other day this is not going to work if you want to perform consistently if you want to play poker and make hundred thousand dollars a year with poker you need to take extreme good care of your mental health and when i say this what i'm basically saying is make sure that you release good chemicals in your brain that don't depend on your poker results that's about it it's as simple as that so when we start playing poker we get really obsessed with it right we just want to study we just want to play and we might sometimes make the mistake of isolating ourselves from the world and just doing poker, poker, poker 24-7. That happened to me and that might have happened to you. And that's fine to happen sometimes, but you don't want to make this a habit. You want to, for example, take extreme good care of your social life. We are extremely social animals. And if you don't spend time interacting with other people, eventually you're going to find yourself feeling lonely, feeling sad, feeling demotivated and all that stuff. And you don't want that. You want to take extreme good care of your social life because because this is going to benefit not only your happiness but also your performance at the table and your capacity to stay consistent i shouldn't even mention physical health here but that's also something pretty obvious you need to exercise you need to eat healthy because as you do that you're going to feel more energized you're going to be more productive and you're going to be able to achieve your goals in a much much better way than if you're just reckless with your nutrition and you're not exercising you're just sitting at your chair every day so take extreme good care of your health prioritize doing that remember that resting is productive sometimes we fall into the trap of believing that we need to do everything and we need to work 12 hours a day and you know sometimes that might be the case sometimes you might feel like that's the correct thing to do but in the long term you want to not just do everything at once you want to do things little by little you want to do things gradually you want to do good things every day it doesn't have to be many good things every day just do a few good things every day you're going to see the effects of this compounding in the long term so take extreme good care of your health particularly social life and also physical health 
This is crucial for performing consistently and playing consistently in poker. Okay, so we covered the getting good part and also the playing consistently part. So now we can move on to the final part, which is build other sources of income. This is not actually a mandatory thing for you to achieve $100,000 a year with poker. But I believe that if you do this, you're going to thank me in the future because poker has a lot of variance, right? So our income has a lot of variance just because of the nature of the game. When you have other sources of income, this is going to help you perform better long term and be more consistent because you know that your income is not solely dependent on one thing that has this huge variance that can make you break even for three four five six months so if you build other source of income this is going to help you stay more calm or relaxed and perform better in the long term and i'm going to break down building other sources of income here into three critical points i'm not going to give you examples or ideas of other source of income you can build if you want that type of content let me know here in the comments if you'd like to see a video about that but here today right now i'm gonna give you three critical points that will be important for any other type of income that you want to generate with poker okay so let's get into it first critical point about building other sources of income is expose yourself this is something extremely extremely important and i can summarize it as the following opportunities don't come for people that cannot be found I believe that that's very straightforward. If you're not exposing yourself, if people don't know who you are, then essentially there are no opportunities that are gonna come knocking at your door. So if you really want to build other sources of income, you generally want to expose yourself at least to some small degree. This can be things like talking to your friends about your career, which poker players actually don't do almost ever. You can expose yourself on Instagram a little bit, expose your routine, expose your results. You can write blogs on poker forums like Reddit once or two plus two. You can stream on Twitch sometimes. All these small things, they might seem like very minor things, but you would be surprised how many people are actually looking into those things and getting to know you by just the small amount of information you're putting out there in the world. So make sure you expose yourself. Make sure you put some information about who you are into the world so that people can get to know you. And eventually, this exposure is going to allow you to receive opportunities. Opportunities that can eventually lead to sources of income. So first thing I'm gonna say here about building source of income is expose yourself. The second critical point about building other sources of income is build connections. Now, this is the natural next step after you expose yourself after you expose yourself people are going to get to know you and then you're going to have opportunities to build connections with other people so what you want to do is you want to cultivate relationships with people that are either going to buy the things that you may sell in the future or that are going to help you find people that are willing to buy the stuff you're going to sell in the future. And you do that by building those connections, by cultivating those relationships. In my life, for example, I built a relationship in the beginning of my career with someone who became my partner today in my company. I started studying with him and after a few years of studying together, we literally built a company together simply because he sent me a message on a poker forum where I had posted a blog. We had similar goals, we started studying together and eventually we built a company together that has generated millions and millions of dollars in the last few years. So if you're exposing yourself, you're going to be able to find these opportunities. And then once those opportunities present themselves, you want to cultivate those relationships. You want to build those connections. And I'm just talking about people close to you, but also people that you don't necessarily feel like are going to be very close to you, but you're also going to be investing some time into that. So people that ask questions to you, people that want advice from you, make sure that you give as much value as possible to the people that come to you, build those connections, build other people's trust, and eventually this is going to pay off to you. Either because these people are going to trust you enough to buy the things that you sell, or because they're going to be so interested in being close to you that they're going to help you find people that want to buy your stuff. Last and final point about building other sources of income is find exactly what you're good at. Now, for me, for instance, I know that I'm good at teaching. I've known this since I was a teenager and this has followed my life since I can remember. Now, if I had decided, for example, to be a Twitch streamer for entertainment value, that would suck. Like no one would watch it because I'm not a funny person. I'm not the guy you go to to hear a joke. I'm the guy people eventually go to because they want to learn some nerdy thing about solvers. That's who I am. I'm the nerdy guy who talks about solvers. So I understood what I'm really good at and I left leverage that over time. That's how I became a run at once instructor. That's how I became a GTA Wiz instructor. That's how I had over 15 private clients in my coaching program at the beginning of my career. 
And that's how I built a company that has 200 people getting staked because I knew that what I was good at is in teaching other people and then I leveraged that. I scaled that to as many people as possible and that's exactly what I'm doing right now with YouTube. I want to scale that to the maximum possibility by putting myself out there in the world. So you want to know, you want to find out exactly what you're good at and you want to leverage that because you are in fact better than most people at at least one thing. You want to know exactly what that thing is and then you want to leverage that thing. That's how you build other sources of income. You're going to know exactly what you're capable of offering to other people and what are the things that people would be willing to pay you money for. Okay, so this is really important. If you want to build other sources of income, you need to have that self image very well formulated to know exactly what are your strengths and perhaps also know what are your weaknesses. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy this video, I think you're going to enjoy this one I separated for you right here. All right, I see you there.